What up, my friends? This is Joshua Kyle again, as usual. Actually, not usual. I have people bug me that I don't make videos enough. But uh, there it was, folks. I don't want to say say goodbye because I'm still going to use it. But uh, the Korg Nano Pad, I loved it. It was great. I actually bought this Quick Lock thing off quicklock.com or something like that. It was 12 bucks. It's just a little thing. You can hold it there. It works nice. Um, I don't know. So out of 1.9.1, as uh, as shown by my good uh, amigo DJ Hardy, um, who put up that great video a couple days ago um, showing what the new beta does, and um, it's something we all have been asking for for a while, which is those those virtual decks, I guess you could call them. Um, what's missing from the virtual decks? Obviously, headphone control and EQs. Um, not a big deal. Um, younger guys don't get crazy because you can't bail out of your um, would be train wrecks with uh, an EQ knob anymore. So get your shit right the first time and uh, you know use these and you'll be a lot better off. So I made a video like a minute ago and it ended up being like 25 minutes. So I'm gonna try to fly through this real quick um, and get the the bread and butter out there so you guys can get it. Chord control. You gotta go in and you gotta um, load the scene chord control scene default. Load that in. What that does is it, it cuts the scenes up for you and all that stuff. You MIDI guys that are MIDI geniuses that have been doing this for a while, you probably know a better way to do it. That's just the way I did it and the only way I know how to do it. Um, your sliders, which are those right there, those bottom ones, and your knobs. Um, what I did is on the sliders for um, scene 1, 2, and 3, because in scene 1, 2, and 3, they all control the pitch of my samples. I had to reverse the on and off value. Right now, the on value is 127, the off value is 0. So that means the bottom is 0, the top is 127. I reversed it. Change this off value to 0. I'm sorry, change the off value to 127, on value to 0. What that does is it flips it around. So now, when you move your pitch slider, when you move your pitch slider up and down, it mimics the same motion as our CDJs or our turntables. Down goes faster, up goes slower. And then you map this to pitch nudge faster, this to pitch nudge slower, and then you nudge you you um, make this your volume. I did that in scenes one, two, and three. Now, what I can tell you about MIDI mapping this thing: do yourself a favor. Don't make the mistakes I made. Get a pen and pad, and um, start writing down the ones you don't use. Because when you get to scene four, scene four doesn't have any numbers left. Um, there's 127 control change uh, assignments and there's 160 surfaces so that means when you get to scene four there's like four notes or four control surface control changes and then you're stuck using um, notes or um, you know trying to figure out how to do it which is what I ran into yesterday when I mapped this so uh, get it believe me get a pen and pad and paper when you go into scene one and you change all those and you change all those write down the numbers that you're changing them from because you can use those numbers in scene four and that's pretty much the only way you're going to do it without a headache because when you use notes these notes these actually light up and it's confusing because they light up in a toggle fashion like you hit it and it stays on and you hit it again and it shuts off so if you're doing something it's, it's, re it's relatively confusing um, again I'm trying to blaze through this because I want to make this a one ten minute video um, what they've done as far as 1.9.1, uh, you can go to Serato.com, check it out, and read the notes, but to, um, there's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff going on, like with the library and stuff, but um, the big one we all know, the sample player. And the other thing that I really, really like is the cue point um, fire. Basically what that does is if you don't have a cue point set, like we'll say in this track, I do have cue point one set, and you used to have to either hit shift or you had to have something set to make that cue point. Now I already have cue point one set, but if I hit cue point two, it's gonna make that cue point. Oops, I'm on the wrong one. <laughs> if I hit cue point two, there it is. So now it's made, I don't have to hold shift and set it anymore. Basically, um, these buttons over here are, are, for me, gonna be phased out. I'm not gonna use those anymore. Or I'm not going to use the controller shift. I always get confused. Is a controller is a shift that sets the cue point. Now I just have to hit the cue point that I want it to set at, and I'm done. Set it and forget it, right? Um, all right. So 
a sample player. I apologize, I can't get this to focus. It seems to be an issue with everybody trying to do this. Um, you got your six banks just like before. You have your um, play from, which is a loop, cue, start, loop one through four, start, cue one through four. You have your pitch, you have your pitch display, you have your nudge, you have your key lock, you have your waveform display, your volume, and your gain. All those things can be turned off and on through this little tiny tab up here. It's like a little drop down menu. You just uncheck the box and it disappears. Now, um, what I can tell you about the cue, um, I'm sorry, the pitch on this, when you map it to this, it is remarkably accurate. Like, I was pretty shocked actually. Um, like most MIDI things, the faster you move, the less accurate it is. So when you really start crawling that, um, that pitch bend, I'm sorry, pitch slider, um, you get some accurate movement. It moves by the decimal point. Now, it's not the fine pitch adjust. Now, this is something I hope, Serato, if you're listening, you'll, you'll implement, is if you, per se, hit um, another button, like let's say we hit this button and move the pitch slider, it'll change to that fine pitch slide. Um, you know, when you can actually see the numbers, uh, the decimal places actually scrolling to give you that uber fine pitch adjustment. Um, but as of right now, you can get it pretty damn close. Like if I wanted to take it from here, this one's like at 130.52. If I wanted to go to like 131.75, it wouldn't be impossible. It might be a little hard. It might take a little concentration, but it's not that hard. But the thing is, you really don't need to do any of that. You take your sample, your song, your loop, your acapella, whatever it is. You take it, you load it to the deck. You then match it to the beat that's playing over the, over the house system or whatever. Once you have that on, once you have it money, you take it and you drop it down in here. Once you've done that, it, it remembers all the adjustments you made down in here. So you don't have to mess with the pitch and stuff like that. At that point, you should only be doing maybe a pitch bend here and there, or maybe just you know making adjustments on your record. You shouldn't be beat matching. Not that you shouldn't be beat matching. It would be a lot more difficult to try to beat match without headphones. Not impossible, but it would be more difficult. Just load it up here, make the adjustments, drop it in here. So like what I did here is I threw this track on, and then I went and threw all my samples up here, and then I just dropped them all down one at a time, then loaded another track. So as of right now, I have eight things that are all basically BPM locked. Um, by definition, BPM locked? No, but I've been doing this shit long enough to know that if I say something's BPM locked, it's BPM locked. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Loading this thing proved a lot more difficult than the nano pad. I'm telling it again, get a pen, piece of paper, and write down these numbers because there's only 127. And when you get to that last setup, um, you got to be out. So basically, I'll see if I can do this in two minutes here. Get this out. Scene one, we got our uh, Q1 through 5, and then on the right channel, Q1 through 4. I don't use the fifth Q on a lot of ones, so it's not a big deal. Um, bottom row, uh, loop 1 through 5, and 1 through 4. Again, I don't loop anything for one beat. I generally loop things for 4, 8, 16, and 32. So that's all I really needed, 4, 16, 18, 32. Um, that's basically for that. Now, what I did is I went in and I changed the numbers for my sliders and my knobs to the same exact number for scene 1, 2, and 3. What that does is no matter what scene I'm in, whether it be 1, 2, or 3, I have control. Let me get to a control here. I have control of my pitch and I have control of my volume of my sample no matter what bank I'm in. That means I don't need to jump through my different scenes to uh, to do that. Scene two, I have my loop roll, um, which you know I use quite a lot doing video. Um, it actually works really well, um, especially with dance music too. Um, basically, same thing. One through six, oh, actually one through five, one through five, six. I have loop off, and then um, seven, seven and eight, or eight and nine. I have um, loop in, loop out. If I want to do a manual loop. Scene three. Same, well, we just talked about that. Pitch slide, volume, um, nudge up, nudge down, and then over here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Those are my banks. Uh, scene four, I have set for video. Um, I'm still messing with that a little bit. They made some changes to the video control, so I'm still trying to work that out with the Serato people. 
Uh, that's pretty much it in a nutshell, folks. I hope this helps. Post any questions you have, I'll try to answer you.